Well, no, my Heidi, my and Issa Bulavanaka, all my fellow stream classmates. I know it's been a wee while since we've done a video, but we've got a special one uh, for all you guys um, to watch. Now, special shout out to all our brothers over in Australia, um, especially in New South Wales. Uh, we had five guys that were destined to come over for the reunion. Now, all sorts of things happening there with COVID and unfortunately looks like um, you won't be making it, um, but that's just how it is. Um, although I see Hugo is trying to make a uh, an attempt and if anyone can get through it, it'll, it'll, it'll be Hugo. But listen guys, just want you to know that, look, this is only the beginning. Um, there'll be more in the future, no doubt. I think we've started something pretty, pretty cool. And keep up the chit chatter on, the, um, on our messenger page. I see the humor. Great to see Pat Ford has not lost his, his sense of humor at all. Um, it's great, guys. Look, it's good, positive banter and um, and keep it going, you know, with everything that's going on in the world. Special thoughts to our Fijian uh, brothers too. Um, look, devastating stuff happening over there at the moment. So hopefully um, uh, things can get or can, can improve. Now, our next interviewee uh, is something, is someone pretty special. Uh, he probably won't like me um, uh, saying these things in my introduction, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, look, whether you were a boarder at Silverstream, uh, a day pupil at Silverstream, uh, if you were a parent uh, of, of a student at Silverstream, you would have had some contact with our, our next interviewee. Uh, you might have played rugby in one of his uh, rugby teams. But look, in particular for boarders, uh, this is someone who was very special um, to you. I boarded for two years, became very special uh, to me and my family. Um, the last time I saw him actually was in 1996 at my 21st birthday. Um, and I know he's attended many 21sts and weddings and, and, and things over, over the years. Now, look, fair to say, in a nutshell, um, this guy was pretty much um, um, our father. Uh, he, he very much became a father figure for, for all of us. And every old boy that I talk to, to this day, whether it be in this video or I meet on the street, often refer to, hey, what is so-and-so up to? And this is the next guy that we're about um, to meet. So can I give a massive uh, warm welcome and, uh, and a massive kia ora, and I'm so happy that he's agreed to do this video, to who we knew formerly as Brother Bede, uh, now by his birth name is uh, John Ethorn, but he's allowed me and us to call him Bede or, or Bro, so I'm going to call him Bro uh, for the sakes of his interview. Can I say kia ora and welcome to Bro. Kia ora, Bro. Hello, Eugene, and uh, hello to everybody. Wow, look, everyone will be watching this um, and I know they can't wait to see you. Can I just say, first of all, thank you so much for joining us and it really is wonderful to see you after all these years. Well, it's nice to see you too. And uh, as I, well, I saw Brendan O'Sullivan a couple of days ago in Christchurch. And uh, as I say, never, I can never forget that decade, my uh, 30s, uh, important part of my life and uh, um, never forget well, I can forget names, and I might now I could forget bodies and faces because uh, people have changed. But no, it was an exciting uh, time of my life. Wonderful, and, and people have definitely changed. I mean, most of um, I talk on on our year group, which of course was eighty nine to ninety three. So we're either uh, we're in the mid forties, we're we're on the downslope to fifty now. Um, but look, I, I'm so thankful to Boz too for making the connection. Um, getting us back in touch, you know, it's um, wonderful. And, and I think you had a good catch up with him in, in Christchurch. So look, let's start off. I just want to touch on some general questions, um, first of all. So let's go back. So take us back to your time at Silverstream. So tell us a little bit what, I guess, look, what took you into um, the Brotherhood, if you like, and, and how many years did you end up doing it at St. Pat's? I did 10 years at St. Pat's. Um, I, I know I always, I think even from my younger years, I, I, I believed I had a calling. Um, but it was, uh, I believed it was a calling to the priesthood. But as it turned out, um, it wasn't for me. Um, when I left St. Bede's, I went to the seminary and I was there for a, well, actually only a matter of months and I left. Um, but I knew one day I'd go back, but it was a matter of when I'd go back. So, um, and it wasn't until I was 
as I was saying before, had those years in the police, uh, traveled overseas for a little while. And it's, I think, 27 or 28, I went, I went back to the, and joined again, the Society of Mary. Right. Um, yeah. So, and then I had uh, a couple of years at the um, Mission Vineyards, Green Meadows. I think the society had a hope that I'd become a winemaker, but I was never that passionate about drinking. Um, and then I ended up at, I think I was about 31 when I went to Silver Street. Wow. And, and before I went there, the provincial said, well, maybe you'll never get there. So, but I did. And it was 10 good years. Wonderful. Now, a lot of guys um, have ever may, maybe have heard, but um, so look, you, you were a policeman. Whereabouts did you police and how long for? Um, it was about six, seven years. It was, um, I, I was 19, or just before I was 19, before I graduated from Trentham. And anyone who was single went either to Wellington, to the barracks, or to Auckland, to Hobson Street when they had barracks up there. So I, I got transferred to Auckland, didn't like it. I had six months and you could swap as long as it didn't cost the police anything to transfer you, you could swap. So there's a couple of brothers, uh, English guys who had been policemen in England, had been posted to Christchurch. They found it very, very quiet. So as you know, the police had this internal kind of newsletter. And so I, I, I swapped and went down to Christchurch after six months. Wow. So I stayed in Christchurch for so I think it was six or seven years. I, I rose to no great heights in the police. I, I, I did every bit, bits and pieces, but it was, you know, it was fun. It was, uh, yeah. it was a good job. Yeah, good on you. Um, and I, as we said before, um, many a streamer uh, have, have joined and, 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 um, and done really well, actually. And, and a lot of names that you will be familiar with became police officers. Um, okay, so take us back to stream. How did you end up becoming the, I guess, what, the boarding master, as we sort of refer to? Uh, no potluck, no potluck there was, but it was potluck because um, I think Mark Walls was, was coming to the end of his run and uh, uh, Jim Dooley arrived. Um, and uh, look, it was just, I, I just think it was, uh, it, uh, it just happened. You did, you did, you, you were just slotted in. That was the way days were. So um, my, my first, I uh, was, I went there to be, uh, assistant bursa to brother steve in the office that was my the main reason for going there but of course you ended up doing everything and anything so mm -hmm. after a year mark walls i'm not too sure if he got shifted or he went or he went and did some further study or whatever it may be so when he left uh, jim dooley uh, gave me that slot yeah yeah wow amazing i mean the school the college now um Look, changed in many ways, um, and some still the same in many ways, um, but in particular the um, uh, I guess the lack of um, uh, priests or brothers. Um, I know. Did you hear Sister Frances Maria still around? She just turned a hundred. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, she's still there at the at the home of compassion. Yeah. she's a hundred yeah. now, and and I'm talking to Graham Duffy recently, and he has to stop her from keep coming over. <laughs> she she's still um got a full wit still witty and still reminding people of what they should be doing but um yeah. i think it's amazing that she's a centurion now and and, yeah. and and still doing her thing um okay well our year um look i, I guess every year was pretty special to you because there were guys and, and characters of every year that that you would have had there um can you obviously remember our year and 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 the, and the group that you had from from third formers right through to seventh formers? Yes, sometimes I, I think you you do remember your first year, um, and that was um, uh, well, it Sue turned out to be, and I knew she'd go by the head boy, you know, yep. and uh, uh, Saul Island, yep. but Saul didn't come till his fourth form. So um, I sort of, sort of that's the, your first year tends to be the one you tend to remember. And then people sort of just come into groups, you know. And um, I suppose one reason I remember uh, your year and so you had so many Gregs, you know, like it was Greg yes. Wood, Greg Moki, Greg Comber. Uh, uh, I'm sure there's some more Gregs there somewhere yeah, along. Yeah, Greg somewhere Byers. Else. Yeah, it's Greg, Greg Byers. Toms. I should remember Greg. Yep. Oh, yeah, all those ones. That's right. So I, it, all, they were all Gregs and Gregories, but it was sort of a tonal kind of thing. They got to know like a dog who, who you meant when you called out Gregory or Greg. Yep. Greg um, so you do you, you do remember groups. A lot of it sort of 
all comes together. Yeah, they're, they're funny you mentioned the Greeks because there were so many of them. They they took a photo. I think it was for blue and white of them yeah. hang, hanging their heads outside the door. Because we did. We had a lot of Greeks um, um, at school. Um, now we left in '93, of course. What year did you leave Stream? Oh, um, uh, um, so I would have been 40, I think. So that's going back 27 years, round about that time, about yeah. 20, 27 years ago. Yeah, look, you loved your rugby. I was fortunate to be in one of those teams, the magnificent under-15s. Um, <laughs> uh, I think, well, we were uh, well, four form for, for, for most of us. Then you had some second years stay on. You always had a good rugby team. You enjoyed, tell us about your rugby. Did you, you obviously enjoyed coaching rugby and, and some of the times you had there? Oh, yeah, there was, uh, yeah, well, my, uh, they're all good. Look, I, 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 every team I had, I enjoyed. Um, I started off with 3B. Um, uh, Blakey had 3A. And I could, I could never, ever, our team could never, ever beat them at practice. And there was only, I only was, always remember one occasion we had a chance of beating them. And uh, Blakey would not let practice over until his his team <laughs> won. So uh, no, no, three B. I had some great three B teams, some really good players there. Um, uh, and then I went to under 15s. I really stole it off Rowan. Yeah. Three uh, um, uh, A. Blakey, I think, left, or I, I think, oh, he might have been going to coach the first 15. So three A was available and. And they changed the weights and the ages around. So I knew it wasn't going to be a particularly good team the following year. And I knew the under 15s were going to, were, were the, had just actually started the grade. So I conned him out of, of the under 15s and then sort of talked him into taking 3A. And so the proof, so I actually, I got under 15s when um, they were actually uh, sort of built up to be quite a good team, really. Yeah, yeah, and they were we uh, was a good team um, that grade and 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 our year. Um, I was talking to a few of the boys, but uh, Andy Logue has fond memories oh, yeah. of carrying tires up to uh, Trentford Memorial. Um, yep. You know, as we used to run up to practice and then and then do the training and then run back. Um, you had some awesome guys that would come along and help out. Reese Archibald um, yep. comes to mind that, that used to help. So it was yeah, I mean, what a wonderful um, um, team that one, and you had heaps of them too. Yeah, and then and of course I think in my last year there I had the uh, what was it the senior Colts um, with Alex McLeod was the the captain of it and uh, that was also a good team. Yeah. Was, uh, oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. yeah. yeah. Like, actually, uh, speaking, I was talking to Alex recently, and uh, yeah. he, he's well, and he uh, he took over his father's uh, menswear business. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, over yeah. in the wider upper, and I remember yeah, that yeah. it used to be when you drove through. I think it was Carterton or Greytown. Might be Carterton. They used it's to have a Carleton, photo. I think. Used to have a photo of his father, and then they took that off and they put a big photo of Alex on top okay. of the on top of the shop. So there you go. Um, yeah. Now, oh, and, and, uh, I, 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 yeah. I don't want to forget about my eleventh eleven cricket side. Oh. <laughs> Tell us a, about was, that. Oh, that was the eleventh eleven. That was the the, the fifth year team. Um, you know, social cricket on Saturday, and. Um, Oh, I had, I, had uh, I think, seven years of that team. It was, and it was all, all seniors yeah. and uh, very social, but actually very good athletes, you know, good guys who had good hand-eye co uh, coordination. And uh, I think just because we had some big scores against us, but we also had some good victories. But it was, a, it was fun to go and just play cricket and enjoy sitting out on a, a lovely summer's day. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Yeah, we had a lot of good cricketers around here. Cricket's still still a mainstay out there. I know Corker, he'll be watching us. He's over in England. Um, so, you know, he, he was our cricketer. Well, we have plenty, but Jamie as well. Um, now, let's talk about um, what you've been doing um, all these years. Now, mm. what did you do when you left Stream? And and look, what have you been doing? Give, give us a rundown. What, what have you been up to? Well, I, I've got, uh, for my, you know, I had 10 years at Silverstream and really it was long enough. You know, you, you run out of puff. And um, so I got transferred into Wellington to St. Mary's of the Angels um, for a year. D didn't really click in parish work. Um, uh, I, just, I, I went back up to Mount Street, which is just off the terrace, which used to be the university sort of place for 
those were going to the priesthood who come down to from Napier to Wellington to Victoria, do a couple of years study and uh, get their degrees and then go back and finish off their uh, priestly studies. So I spent uh, three years there doing sort of out, outreach in, in uh, Wellington, doing various things. I also went to university when I was there. Um, also, it was a sort of a time when I was questioning my faith. Uh, everyone has a, a, that. Um, and at the end of the, th so uh, at the end of the th three years being at Mount Street, I applied for dispensation for my vows. You had to do that through, you know, your order and off to Rome it went and I got my dispensation. And so I left the order. So that would have been four years after I'd finished at Silverstream. So it was, as I said to Brendan the other day, you had choices when you left. Mm -hmm. It was either you took the, the right fork in the road, which was uh, just worrying about a mortgage for the rest of your life, or you took the left-hand fork in the road, which, as he described, left on an adventure. So I decided to take the adventure. And um, I went to Australia. I, uh, I, lived, I had a nephew who actually went to Silverstream. He was living, had just moved to Melbourne with his girlfriend. So I went and stayed with him for a couple of months. He was renovating a house he, he, um, he had bought. And after we got, got a lot of this of the hard stuff done, I got a, a job, got a, a flat, uh, stayed there for th three years. I did, because I, worked, I, I had office experience. So it was easy for a Kiwi to pick up a job over there. And um, so I'd work for six months, then come back to New Zealand to see mum and dad. Uh, oh no, no, dad died before then, but mum was still alive. So I come back and see mum for a couple of weeks, then go back and find another six month contract. And, and one of the times I went to China for a holiday on a tour and I sort of fell in love with it really. And so I came back to, to Melbourne, applied for a teaching position somewhere in China. I got it went there and had 13 lovely, 13 lovely years in China. Wow, that's incredible. So China, how was the, um, how did you find the language and, and did you become uh, fluent in what it, Mandarin or whatever they speak? Uh, you're right with Mandarin and I didn't become fluent. I, I learned a few words, uh, which, uh, but no, no, I, I went there with the intention, I suppose, but it, it, you could get by without it. Um, so, you know, I went to, I, had, I went to the first city I went to was very small. Um, I had three years at what they call a middle school. Um, while I, you know, so I, and I went down and I did a, a qualification in how to teach English as a second language. Um, so I got a certificate for that. So I, I knew what I was doing and it sort of made it a lot easier. And then after three years in a small city, I decided to, I needed city life. So I went to Wuhan, oh, wow. uh, where, the, where the virus um, started. And I had a year in a university there. But teaching at a university in China is nothing. They, all they wanted was someone who was white and who could speak English. It didn't matter wow. if they knew how to teach or not. It was all about face. And after two years, I got a, sort of got headhunted to go to a, one of these private English schools. Um, they were having problems retaining staff. and. Uh, so I worked, I, th I don't regret it. Um, it was a, the school was all about money, you know, making money. And I wasn't, but I spent, I did two years there. And then I transferred and I got another job down in Tangent. And then the last six years, I had a, a, a job in a university in Beijing. And the six years in Beijing was really, really good. Wow. What an amazing yeah. experience. Now you touched on Wuhan there and you've mm -hmm. been there and you know, felt and seen the environment, which is, you know, Wuhan's pretty, most people will know Wuhan now. What, yeah. what in your experience, um, like, it, can, can you see how, uh, if it did originate there, how COVID, can you see how it uh, spread so quickly, I guess? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Um, no, it's a, it's a hub. It's a, it's a hub of, in central China. You know, the, the train stations there, you know, the amazing transport system, airports all, all built within my few years I was in there when I went there the the Yangtze River flows through the city mm. and it, when I first went there it had a railway bridge with a road 
bridge on the top of it, one more and one other bridge. Now uh, it has something like eight bridges across the river. It, it just opened a one tunnel under the river when I was there. Now it has three or four tunnels. It's got subways. Of, so, you can, and so it's just about get, getting people into the city and out of the city. And so you can understand that just if something happens, it, it would spread within yeah. you know, days. Wow. And you made some very good friends there, right? I, I yeah. saw some photos recently. And you, you're still keeping in yeah. touch with them, with them? Well, yeah. Well, it, it, um, it, it, as I said, if I waffle, tell me. But um, actually, the place I'm living in, in now, um, I'm looking after a house for a couple who were from Wuhan and have now gone back to Wuhan to do some further studies. So it, uh, when I, he worked for me in, when I was at, at a school in, in the city, and when I left there, I thought, well, that's the end. You'd say goodbye to everyone. You'd never see them again. I was walking down the street of Christchurch, and who should I run into? You know? Amazing. So, um, so uh, yeah, so um, do I keep in contact? Yeah, I've got lots of friends over in China. Yeah, and, and you're looking after one of their houses now, so it worked out really yeah. well. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Um, just want to touch on relationships, um, if if I may. Um, yep. I guess now that you're um, um, a lay person, um, have you are you in a relationship? Have you had relationships? Um, what's what's happening? Had had. Yep. Had in China. <laughs> uh, it, was, yep. it was probably hard to hard not to. Um, but no, I think I. To be honest, I think I've got too selfish. And uh, I, I think I just like the freedom of um, doing what I want to do. Um, but I, would, I don't, I, I've got the house where I'm saying, when I first came here, had a couple of flatmates from, from the owners of the property. One's still here. So I wouldn't like to not live with somebody in, in, a, in a home situation. But as far as a committed relationship, I just think, I'm just too old and too selfish. Uh, you're not too old. Look, I remember. I'm not too old, but the selfish part, I think. All the mums, all the mums used to like Brother Beat. <laughs> well, I, I, I have to mention that. that. I have to mention that Mary McNaught used to, when when Mary came down with Hugo, and she must have come down on Valentine's one one day, whenever that fell. And she says to me, she said to me, "Do you ever get a Valentine's card?" I said, "I've never had a Valentine's card in my life." So for the next four years or five years, as long as Hugo was at Silver Street, I used to get a Valentine's card from Mary McNaught. Uh, but it stopped, of course, when uh, Hugo had left anyway. So that was sort of, so Mary was the only one who ever sent me a Valentine's card. Oh, what a wonderful, um, yeah. what a wonderful memory. Now, look, um, we've had a couple of tragedies over the years, um, but all in all, we've been pretty lucky. Um, of course, you know, we lost um, uh, Damien Maguire or Hook. Um, who was here above us, and then, and then, um, of course, uh, his, his good mate and our good mate, uh, Woodsy, um, yeah. uh, a few years ago now. Um, but you know, touch wood, um, most of our boys are still still around and and, and doing pretty well. Um, so you're in Christchurch now. Um, do you see yourself there for a wee while, or, or what, what? Any plans to move on from Christchurch? Absolutely not. Um, I, I I I think I always wanted to come back to Christchurch. Oh, so you're, um, you're, from, you're you're from Christchurch? Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah right. from Christchurch. Kente. So if I've got I've got um, brothers and sisters here still. Um, uh, no, I I thought Christchurch would be the place I'd come back to. Um, I've still got some friends from my school years that I've kept in contact with over the years. Um, no, I I don't think I would ever thought of being anywhere else but Christchurch. Fair enough. Now we're heading towards the end. A couple of quick questions, and this is a big one because you know everyone, knew everyone. But look, anyone from our year group who, for you, you just always remember or it pops in your mind, you know, um, that, that, <laughs> that you have fond memories of. Well, it's it's. I always I always find that it's it's a. If you mention one particular person, it sort of diminishes the other. Yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't, you know. I have I have wonderful memories of uh, of of everybody, you know. Mm. Um, I I ran, ran into uh, when I came back to Christchurch a couple of years ago. Um, 
a, a boy by the name of Simon Bennett. I don't you know if you Simon? remember Simon. Yes, yes. Yeah. He used to have a long um, year. Yeah, and, and si Simon left Silverstream. Uh, I thought it was uh, in the fourth form, but it must have been in the sixth form. Um, but uh, yeah, he, he, uh, uh, Simon, Simon had, and I, I'm sure he doesn't worry me yeah. saying this, but he, you know, he he he, were, he had been adopted, yeah. and um, and uh, you know, and I, when I ran into him, he, you know, he'd found his family. You know, he he knew it. It goes by as as uh, Simon McLean now. And you know you meet people like him, and you just think he's just a to totally with it guy. And I met his wife, and uh, a, uh, was it one, two children, one one child, I think it was. But just a totally different guy. I went around wow. to their house, had a meal, and that kind of thing. Wow. So those time of things, and of course he was a good friend with Troy Wobby. Yes. And Troy and Simon, they did quite a lot of work with Ho Hepa. You know, I think life didn't treat them particularly well early on but you know as adults of you know that they're, they're just nice people you know and yes, uh, yes. yeah so and i suppose the man who had the palm tree in the background who now lives at, uh, <laughs> in the upper hut i suppose um one has to, to to remember him too you know so um uh yeah, Chris, Chris was there. I think probably one of the reasons I remember Chris in some ways was when I was over and I had a three months sabbatical leave, I think, in your last year at school. I went to Sydney, I think it was then. And um, I kept getting these reports about his behaviour. And um, uh, and at the end of the course, um, I wanted to take a holiday. And Jim Dooley said, no, you get back to Silver Stream. And um, I think it was while I was away, Chris did his evil Knievel thing wasn't it he went with his yeah. motorbike out into yeah. the into the into, onto the main field so I think that that he sort of stuffed my holidays up for me but you know you do have I do I have lovely memories of lots of people and you know and and uh, you know Greg Woods and uh, you know all those guys that just were wonderful human beings mm. and uh as you say it's sad uh, but it's life mm. It is, it is life. And it's, it's a really cool time for us. You know, we, like I said, you know, we've reached this age and a lot of us have reflected all reflecting on, you know, on some of those really good mates and good times and maybe some not good times, you know, yeah. that, that, that we had at stream stream certainly wasn't for everyone. Um, yeah. you know, but it, you know, it, it, it was for some and, and not some for others. All right. So you've, you've answered my next question, which was pretty much, do you keep in touch with anyone from stream? And thanks for telling us about Cy Bennett. Someone was talking mm -hmm. about him recently and no wonder we can't find him because he now goes by McClay, right? Yeah. So, that's, so that's another, um, uh, area we can, we can track him down. All right. Yeah. Well, listen, I know that you, um, are not going to be joining us for our reunion. Um, but of course, now that we're in touch, you know, we'd love to catch up with you um, in a more, in a less formal um, occasion. You know, maybe uh, I don't know. We we may, might be able to catch up at a rugby game down at that stadium down in Christchurch sometime. I'm sure the boys would love to come down and see you. Would you be open to catching up with um, some of the guys? In, in a uh, ne ne never a problem. Yep, never a problem. Um, you, I think if you haven't got my number, Brendan's got my my mobile and. Uh, you got my email, and if anyone wants it, that's 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 great. Awesome. So I, I look, Eugene. I hope I hope the reu reunion goes well. I'm I'm sure everyone will miss well, probably behave for a little while, and then will misbehave thereafter. But um, if you don't misbehave now, you, you know you got to have fun. That's uh, that's, uh, oh, that's but what life is about having fun. Yeah. Look, we are looking forward. To, we've got forty seven coming. Yeah. Um, and we did have five from Aussie, 47 um, and partners um, as well. So out of the whole thing, we're sort of going to take up a little corner of the, um, of, of, of the, of the evening, which, which will be great. But um, yeah, like I say, we'd love to come down and, um, and see you down in Christchurch sometime. Um, look, here's a chance uh, finally just to say a message because uh, the guys are going to be watching this this afternoon. Please give them a uh, message. from. Well, well first thing, this is, this is green tea. It's not, it's not a beer. I'm actually a teetotaler, which is quite boring. Uh, this, well, I'll leave you to guess what that one is. Um, 
uh, if I had a if I had a message, it's um, know when you've had a, got enough money. I think one of the one of the sad things I see about in life now is people never know what enough money is, and people work their butts off all their life thinking, uh, and they never know when to stop. Um, I'm fortunate that I I know that I know the money that I can survive on and enjoy life. But unfortunately, a lot of people with money don't, and uh, they keep accumulating and accumulating. So. Uh, you know, if you're blessed with money, I know some of some people are very generous with what they do with it. But you know, someday you've got to live life and uh, retire and enjoy as a family in life as soon as you can. Don't leave it too late. Well, what a wonderful way to end our meeting um, with Bro with John. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, look, in my eyes, you haven't changed a bit. Uh, it's great to hear that familiar <laughs> familiar voice. Um, and I know the guys are going to really enjoy watching this. Um, look, on behalf of all of us, all our love to you and um, all the best with the golf. Uh, can we, uh, a game you can always improve on. And, um, Absolutely. And, and, and I hope you're enjoying it. And um, when you get a chance, work your way through the 40-odd uh, videos, and you'll hear some wonderful stories. You mentioned Troy there. He's got a wonderful story on his video. And um, look, bro, thank you so much for your time, and look after yourself. Look forward to seeing you soon. Cheers. Thanks, Eugene. And be well. Bye.